All right, so as a lot of you know, Blender 3.0 just came out. And one of the cool things that came along with it is the diorama scene where you can practice putting like pieces of furniture and things like that. It renders out really nice and it looks really good. So I thought we could make a video showing how to make something like that from start to finish. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna start by adding a cube. So we'll do a shift A, add a cube. Then we're gonna take it and just align it so that it's level with the floor right here. Actually, I'm probably gonna scale it up by a factor of two and then level it with the floor right here. So the first thing we need is for this to be a room. So we're just gonna tab in here and that takes us to edit mode. And then using vertex select mode by tapping one, we're just gonna select this vertex, tap the X key and delete this vertex. All right, so now we wanna give this a little bit of thickness. Make sure that you apply your rotation and scale first, but we wanna go into our modifiers. We wanna give this just a little bit of thickness with the solidify modifier like this. And we can drag this to whatever you want. Usually I drag it to a negative number because I want it to go out. Uh, maybe we'll put it at like point, negative point two. So we'll do negative point two, hit the enter key. And so now let's add an opening in this wall. So to do that, you're just gonna do a shift A, add a cube, then we're gonna take that wall, or we're gonna take that cube, we're gonna intersect it in our wall where we want our window opening to be. So then you can go ahead and scale it so it's not quite so big. Um, just make sure that it's totally intersecting with your wall right here. Now I'm gonna add a modifier to my wall. So I'm gonna go to add modifier. I'm gonna select Boolean. This is gonna allow us to cut an opening and we're gonna use the eyedropper to select this object. Now the problem with this is it's cut the opening but we can't see it because this object is blocking us. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select our cube right here, go into our object settings under viewport display, and we're just gonna set this to display as bounds rather than as textured. So then we can see that the object is here, but it's not blocking our view. Notice how if you don't use a solidify modifier on this wall, then this isn't going to work. So now we've got this in here, let's start adding our beams. So to add a beam, I'm just gonna do a shift A and we're gonna add a cube. We're gonna scale it down like this. We'll go to maybe a front view, right here, and we're just gonna move this so that it aligns with the edge of our wall. So we're also gonna move it over here like this. And we can fine tune that in a second. So make sure after you do that, you've applied your rotation and scale. But then we're just gonna tab into edit mode and we're just going to move this up so that it aligns with just about the bottom of our ceiling right here. And so the problem with this is that it's a little bit boring right? Um, so that it looks like a perfect piece of wood. So all we're going to do is we're just going to tab into edit mode. We're going to do a control R and scroll your mouse wheel up a little bit. And we're just going to add some cuts in here. And you can just right click in order to leave that as is. But all we're going to do is maybe we'll hold the Z key and go into wireframe mode. But all we're going to do is just move these around a little bit on the various axes. So this doesn't look perfect. So all we want is we just want to give this a little bit of random scale, maybe some random rotation, not a lot, just enough that when you look at this, it doesn't look like a perfect board, right? So we'll take this, move it over. So we'll call that good enough. So now if I go back into solid mode, you can see how I've got this beam in here and you can adjust this manually too. So if you don't like where one of the vertices ended up or something like that, you can just go back into edit mode and adjust that. But then, I'm just gonna do a shift D to duplicate it. I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. And then we're just gonna move it so that this works as our upper board right here. One thing to note about this is you might wanna rotate these on the object axes just a little bit so that you don't have, like if you have like a distinctive corner or something like that, it doesn't show up as being exactly the same on every single corner. But then we're just gonna take this, make sure it's aligned with our wall with the top of our wall. And then if we have to make things a little bit bigger, we can just tab into edit mode and just move the vertices around a little bit. But then I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna rotate it along the Z axis, maybe like 180 degrees, again, so that it doesn't look super uniform. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. And we're just gonna use the move tool. So just tap the G key in order to move these together. And if you ever get something where things just don't really work the way that you want them to work, you need a little bit of fine adjustment. You can just tab in here and just kind of move some things around. So let's say I wanted this to be a little bit wider or something like that, just enough that this isn't perfectly square. 
and then I'm going to do a shift D to duplicate this. We'll do this one more time over here. And in this case, I'll just tab into edit mode and just move the vertices over a little bit like this. So now what I have is I have wood boards around the outside. I have my general shape and then we could come in here and we could create a window too. So again, I could just add a cube, scale it down. And you might even turn on vertex snapping when you move this around just to get it to snap to the corners that you want it to go to. So that could be kind of helpful in order to do this. But then we're just going to do the same thing where we're just going to make sure that it's the proper thickness. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we want this to make look kind of handmade and lived in. But I'm going to apply my rotation and scale. And then I'm just going to tab into edit mode and I'm just going to extrude or move my faces so that they align right here. And remember that we want this to go all the way around. So probably what I would do is I would just do a control R in order to add a loop cut like this. I'm going to do a shift tab in order to turn vertex snapping back off. But I'm just going to extrude this all the way around. And again, this doesn't have to be exactly uniform because exactly uniform isn't the look that we're going for. So I'm going to tap the E key to extrude. We're going to move this down. Add another loop cut. We'll extrude this across. And then we can do the same thing here that we did down below. So you could just do a control R and just scroll up in order to add a couple loop cuts on each one of these. So then we're just going to jump in wireframe mode and we're just going to move some things around. So doing the same things that we've been talking about. So we've got kind of the external here. Now what I want to do is I just want to create some little pieces inside of here. So I'm just going to do a shift right click in order to place my 3D cursor here. And maybe I'll move that a little bit down, but then I'm just going to do a shift A just to add another cube in here. And I'm going to scale it down so that it's maybe like half the thickness of this object. So something like this, we're not going to try to get super, super detailed with this. Then we're just going to tab into edit mode. We'll just extrude this across. And then we can just add a little loop cut in here. We're just going to extrude this up. We're just going to extrude this down. And we're just going to add a little more detail the same way that we have with everything else in this model so far. And so honestly for materials, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the materials that actually came with the asset library for Blender. So we've kind of figured out how to model this out. Now let's talk about how we could use the assets in order to texture this. So you could also get your own textures, but for this, we're just going to use those. So make sure that you've downloaded the diorama file, which I will link to in the notes down below. And for me, I've got these assets saved in my assets folder. I will link to a video where I talked about how you can uh, use the asset manager in order to access these materials. But now what I want to do is I just want to drag a window open over. We're going to go to the asset browser. And again, I will link to a video on how to get to all of this in the notes down below. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to set this up so I can bring my materials onto my object. So notice how at the moment, if I was to drag the herringbone planks in here, that's not going to look very good because it's going to apply it to everything in our object. So what I want to do is I just want to create some placeholder materials in here. So for example, I want to add a new material right here. We're just going to call it floor. It doesn't really matter what it says right now or what's in here because we're going to override it in a second. But then I'm going to take this wall. I'm going to create something. I'm going to call it wall one. I'm going to click on a sign. Then over here, I'm going to add a new one. I'm just going to call it wall two. And we're going to assign that. So again, it doesn't really matter what we put in here because all we're going to do is we're just going to drag our material in. Well, notice how on that floor, what that does is that overwrites that floor material with the herringbone planks. Don't worry too much about the scale. We're going to fix that in a second. But for this, we're going to drag our teal plaster onto this wall and our white plaster onto this wall. So now we've got a scene in here where we've got materials applied. But notice how the floor is way too big. It's probably way too big on the walls too. So all we want to do to adjust that is we're just going to adjust the UV mapping. So I'm going to tab into edit mode select this face and go to UV editing. And so inside of UV editing, what I can do, and I find it helpful to have the materials turned on over here. So for this surface, all I want to do is I just want to select it. And then over here, I can tap the A key 
and I can scale this up. Well, notice how when I scale this up, the flooring material gets smaller. So what that means is that means we can adjust the size of the material on our floor. Then we can do the same thing for this surface right here. And again, we're just going to tap A and then just scale this up. This one's not that big of a deal because it's more of a color. And then for this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tap A, scale it up. And so notice what that's doing is that's making that wall material look smaller. And so the other thing we can do is we can also apply the wood material to these boards right here. So we're just going to go back to layout mode and I'm going to find the wood material and we're going to go with probably this one right here, the wood too. I'm just going to drag it onto that object. So notice how it takes a second for that to get applied, but that does apply to that object right here. So we're just going to drag that onto all of these right here. And so if we wanted to, we could go into UV editing mode and actually adjust this so we could select it all and then do like an actual unwrap of it. I'm not going to worry about it too much for right now because this wood actually looks pretty good the way that it went into this scene. So I'm not really concerned. Um, but if you guys are interested, we can talk about that in a future video. So now let's talk a little bit about our lighting and scene setup. So at the moment, and we can go ahead and we can close this window. And so I'm just going to right click in here. I'm just going to join my areas this way. So I'm back to my overall view. But now we need to set up our lighting on our camera. So at the moment, right, if I click on this for rendering, all I'm getting is some light coming off of this point light that gets put in here um, by default. So what we want to do is we want to duplicate the lighting that's contained inside of this diorama scene right here. So what we're going to do, and I need to remember to put a wood material on this surface, what we're going to do is we're going to do a shift A and we're going to add a spotlight. And so the spotlight is going to be the main source of light in our scene. One thing that's going to be really important is make sure that it's aligned with this window. Then we're just going to move it away like this we're going to move it up and then we're going to adjust it so that it's shining through our scene. Notice how our shadows, um, and I'm going to delete this, but notice how in a moment our shadows are going to be adjusted based on this. However, Right now, our power isn't high enough. So we need to run the power of our spotlight up to 2000 watts, like this. So notice how when we run the power of our spotlight up to 2000 watts, we get a lot of light coming into this scene through this window. And you can adjust the way this looks by moving the spotlight around, right? So for example, I want this to kind of shine over here. So I want to get some shadows on my wall as well. And so you're going to have to play around with this just a little bit um, in order to get the result that you want. Notice how you can also adjust how wide this light is by dragging the little arrow right here. But what we've done is we've created a light that's coming into our scene. Um, this is rendering out fairly nicely, but let's go ahead and let's add a little more detail to it. So this scene has several different lights in it. So it has a bounce light, a fill light, and then another fill light. So these lights are all around the sides right here. We're gonna go ahead and add them. I'm not seeing a massive change when I add these in because the lighting power is so weak, but I think it does improve the overall lighting. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a couple area lights. So I'm gonna do a shift A, and we're gonna add a light area. And we're gonna kind of center that on the scene, maybe scale it up. And we're going to keep our power fairly low, maybe like five watts or something like that. Then we're going to duplicate that light. So we're going to do a shift D. We're going to move this over, down, and then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. So we've got another light right here. Then we're going to do a shift D. We're going to do the same thing over here like this. One other thing you can do to improve your lighting performance is you can add in a radiance volume. So what you can do is you can do a shift A and under light probe, we're going to add an irradiance volume object. I'm just going to move that up and I'm going to scale it so that my entire scene is inside of the box right here. What this is going to allow us to do is this is going to allow us to bake our indirect lighting. So if you go under the render properties right here and click on the button for bake indirect lighting. What, so what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to pre-calculate a little bit of the lighting inside of our scene that's uh, coming from, that's not coming directly from a light source. You can see how you're getting a little bit more lighting information on your wall. All right. So if you still feel like everything's a little bit dark, you can come in here with like your fill lights 
for example, and add more light coming from those. So notice how if I add a little bit more coming from this fill light, so maybe like 30 watts or something like that, my scene is gonna light up back here in the dark. So we could do the same thing over here, just to brighten everything up a little bit. If you don't feel like you're getting enough light from your, um, from your sun over here. So you can kind of do that however you want. Notice how that is decreasing the contrast in here a little bit. So um, just be aware that um, you're gonna have to play around with that a little bit. But now let's set up our camera. So um, we should already have a camera in the scene from our default scene. If not, just do a shift A and add a camera. I'm just gonna hit the zero key right here. Well, the first thing I wanna do is I want to jump over and I wanna set my camera size to be 1024 by 1024. What that's going to do is that's going to adjust the size of my view right here. Well, then I'm just going to tap the N key. Um, I'm going to lock my camera to my view and I'm just going to rotate this around so I can see my diorama right here like this. So the other thing I want to do is I want to go into my camera settings and I want to set this to be an orthographic rather than a perspective. So that's kind of a stylistic thing, but you can see how the orthographic just totally changes the look of what's in here. So now we've got this pretty much set up. Um, we could go back into our asset library if we wanted to and add some assets to our scene. So maybe we add, so first off, I'm gonna add another wood material to this window right here, because the window itself um, looks a little bit plain. So we're gonna add some wood to that. And then we could also add some of the other objects that are in here as well. So for example, maybe we wanted to add the dresser to this scene. We just drag that in and place it. We could add a side table, really add whatever we want out of this library. So again, I will link to the video about this in the notes down below, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop this in. All right, so now we're gonna render our image. So if you're gonna render this with Eevee, make sure you turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections right here. All right, and so we wanna render this with cycles. So I've selected cycles under my render properties. Um, a couple things that I wanna take a look at. So first off, um, you can toggle denoising both for your viewport and your render um, inside of this little drop down under sampling. That's a little different from the older versions of Blender. Um, specifically, I wanna make sure that I've toggled on denoise um, so that my final image gets denoised inside of Blender. And then I also wanna make sure that I've turned my samples down a little bit. I I think this defaults like 4,000 samples, which is a lot. It means your rendering is gonna take a long time. I'm gonna bring this down to like 256 and that ought to be fine for what we're trying to do here. But once you've got all those set up the way that you want them to go, you can just go up to render and click on render image. And that's gonna go through, that's gonna pop up a window and that's gonna render out the image. So then you're just gonna have to wait for a little while while it goes through and renders this out. And then you can take a look at the final result. All right, so if we look at our final result, we've got a nicely lit scene in here. We've got the light coming through here. We've got um, the shadows of the mullions of the window coming off of the desk right here. And you've got the light being kind of blocked by your plant right here. So overall the lighting in this scene, I think turned out really nice. So you can use this method to create models like this in the future as well. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this or if there's other tutorials like this you'd like to see. So if you do want to learn more about the Blender 3.0 Asset Browser, I will link to my tutorial on that on this page. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.